this video is about the discriminant. The discriminant is a vocabulary word that's related to our quadratic equation. In our quadratic equation, this part underneath the square root, b squared minus 4 times a times c, that is our discriminant. And that discriminant determines a lot of different things about our equation, our equation uh, that we use the quadratic equation on. So if the discriminant is greater than zero, then that equation will have two unique real solutions. Here, when we're saying the word real, we're talking about uh, the type of numbers. So these will have real numbers as solution. And the word unique here means that they'll be different from each other. So let's give an example. If I have the equation six x squared minus x, minus 12 is equal to zero. Here my a is equal to six, my b is equal to negative one, my c is equal to negative 12. So if I were to plug six, negative one, and negative 12 into my quadratic equation, the b squared minus four ac will be bigger than zero or positive. After I finish plugging into this, my solution that I'll get will be x equal 3 over 2 or x equal negative 4 over 3. That's me plugging my ABC into the whole quadratic equation. I will end up getting and then I simplify it, I get x equal 3 over 2 or x equal negative 4 over 3. So here I have, uh, here are my two solutions down here. And both of these are real. There are two of them, and the word here, unique, is talking about the fact that they are different from each other. Let's look at this on a graph. If I were to graph uh, let's look at what the graph of this would look like if this was a y here. So let's look at the graph for uh, y equal 6x squared minus x minus 12. All right. So uh, if I was going to look at the y, the x-intercepts for this graph right here, your x-intercept, you change the y into zero, and then you solve. Now let's look at what the graph of this equation right here looks like. So here's a graphing program. I'm going to plug in y equals 6x squared minus x minus 12. So it looks like this. And I want to point out here that the graph crosses the x-axis twice, one at 3 over 2, which is 1.5, one at negative 4 over 3, which is right there. Negative 4 over 3 is negative 1.33333, repeating forever. All right. 
So this is what happens when our discriminant is greater than zero. Let's look at another case. If our discriminant is equal to zero, then we'll end up having one unique real solution. Let's just give an example of that. So for example, let's say I have the equation 4x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals 0. Okay, here my a is equal to 4, my b is equal to negative 12, my c is equal to 9. And if I were to plug those values into my quadratic equation, this b squared minus 4ac would equal 0. So after I plug if after I plug these three values, a equal 4, b equal negative 12, c equal 9, into my quadratic equation, you'll end up seeing something that looks like this. You'll have x is equal to uh, after you plug it in and, and, and you simplify you end up having x is equal to 12 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 8. Now normally with this plus or minus you end up having these sort of two solutions. You have x equal 12 plus square root of 0 over 8, x equal 12 minus square root of 0 over 8, but for both of these, it just simplifies to 12 over 8 because plus 0, minus 0 uh, will not affect your solution. So at the end, you have uh, x equal 12 over, 12 over 8, or I'm going to simplify it to x equal uh, 3 over 2. This is called a double solution sometimes because your one solution shows up twice, but this solution right here is real. And although you got x equal 3 over 2, although you got that two times, because they're the same, we count them as only one unique real solution. Unique means uh, none are the same as it. OK? So once again, that happens when our discriminant is 0. And it's because although we split it here, adding zero, subtracting zero will not change the value. And so therefore these two will be the same. If you see a factored version of this, you can also tell when you're gonna have a double solution like this or one unique solution. If I factored this, I get two X minus three, times 2x minus 3 equals 0. 
And so if you look at the factor form, you can tell that there's only going to be one unique solution, like the solution for 2x minus 3 equals 0, and 2x minus 3 equals 0 will be the same. Let's look at the graph of this. So if I were to uh, have the graph of y equals this, so if I change that to So uh, these two are the same, except that I changed the 0 into y. So if I were to graph this right here, and I were to look at the x-intercepts where y equals 0, uh, let's see what a double solution or one unique real solution to a quadratic looks like. So here is 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. And what you'll notice here is this graph, uh, it comes down, it just touches the x-intercept at 3 over 2, or 1.5, and then it goes right back up. So it doesn't actually go through the x-intercept, it just touches it and goes right back up, sort of like bouncing off of it. This is what happens at a double solution. And once again, this is what you get when your discriminant is equal to zero. So we've looked at discriminant greater than zero equal to zero. Let's look at when the discriminant is less than zero. So if you have a discriminant less than zero, if you're If the stuff underneath the square root is less than zero, then you're in, you'll end up having a square root of a negative. And if that happens, you end up having imaginary, uh, that part right there is imaginary. Another way of saying it is, if our discriminant is less than zero, then we're gonna have two unique complex solutions. And just a quick reminder of what this word here means, complex. Once again, that's talking about a type of number, like whole numbers, integers, real, irrational. Complex is a category of numbers. And complex numbers will have a part that is real and a part that is imaginary. And here, if our discriminant is less than zero, then my square root of the discriminant is your imaginary part. And then this minus b, uh, there's your real part. Technically, uh, negative b over 2a is your real part. Okay, so let's give an example of this one right here. So if I have Four x squared minus sixteen x plus nineteen is equal to zero. My a is equal to four. B is equal to negative sixteen. C is equal to nineteen. And if I plug those three values into my quadratic equation here, I will end up getting. After I simplify, I will get, or actually before I simplify, I will end up getting x equal uh, 16 plus or minus the square root of negative 48 over 8. Uh, so you end up having uh, that right there. Um, if I wanted to, I think I'm actually going to leave it right there. I can simplify this more if I want to, 
but uh, let's break this into the two pieces. You have x equal 16 plus. negative uh, square root of negative 48 over 8 x equals 16 minus square root of negative 48 over 8 uh, and just a record that this sort of simplifies to 2 uh, or this simplifies to 2 plus or minus square root negative 3 over 2 but I think I'm gonna leave it like that right now okay so you have 16 plus this, or 16 minus that. So these two are different from each other, which is why we say we have two unique solutions. And this has a real part, and it has an imaginary part. So therefore, the solutions are complex. If I were to look at the graph for this, so let's change my 0 into a y. You have 4x squared minus 16x plus 19 equals y. And so what would the x-intercept look like in this case? If I change my y into 0, what does my x-intercept look like when you have two imaginary solutions? So here's a graph of 4x squared minus 16x plus 19. So your graph will not cross the uh, x axis. So uh, the x-intercepts only talk about uh, real solutions because uh, because this graph is an x, y uh, axis. Uh, so there are no imaginary numbers that you can sort of show on this. So our two imaginary, our two complex solutions that have imaginary parts, um, those x-intercepts do not show up in the graph. So basically the graph is up here and does not cross the x-axis.